This is Fenwick Kirk, or Guthrie's Kirk. It lies in East Ayrshire. It was established in 1641 as a new parish. The first minister was the Reverend William Guthrie. He chose the location and designed the church that was built in 1643. He was a covenanter. He was a particularly zealous minister. When he first came to the parish, very few of the parishioners came to the church. It is said he even went as far as going incognito to parishioners' houses, asking for a bed for the night and eventually revealing who he was. In the end, he established a great following, but he lost his kirk because he refused to join the episcopy. And he attended the event the, at Mocklin involving the Covenanter armies and also other Covenanter involvements. A laird's loft at the church was occupied by the Muirs of Rallon. Their coat of arms still sits above the entrance door, which was reached by a stone staircase which led up to the loft. The Crawfords of Crawfordland have a burial enclosure here. It used to have a classic iron door. It still has the iron bars across the top to prevent the theft of graves by the resurrectionists or body snatchers. Only one burial appears to be there, that is of William Hewson Crawford. The Kirk has considerable associations with the Covenanters. This was the group of people who during the so-called killing times continued to refuse to accept the King as the head of the Church, believing that only God could lead the Church. For this they suffered in considerable numbers. There are a number of memorials and also burials of Covenanters at the Kirk. A feature of the churchyard is that at either entrance there are hexagonal shaped buildings that look a bit like sentry boxes. These have been said to be for housing as the families as guards against body snatchers, and it's more likely that they were offertories, that is a place where the money for the collection was handed in, or money for any other purposes, because many churches have felt it was undignified to collect money during the service. The church used to contain a number of Covenanter relics, such as the Covenanter flag. Many of these are now displayed at the Loch Goyne Covenanters Museum, it's on Whiteley Moor. This was the home of John Howey, who wrote a book called The Scots Worthies, giving the detailed life histories of many of the Covenanter martyrs. A number of the Howies of Loch Goyne Farm are buried here, in particular John himself. His is one of the table-top tombs, but their writing is hard to read these days. The graves of the Covenanters themselves present a certain amount of confusion. Some of them are already replacements for the originals, and in a number of cases the, both the surname and the first names are confused. Perhaps the most infamous grave present is that of James White. He was killed by a dragoon called either Peter or Patrick Ingalls. This was in 1685. He had been caught with others attending a prayer session at the nearby farm of Little Blackwood. He was the only one who was armed, and apparently he fired a shot, but the light of the ignition exposed him, and he was shot dead. However, his head was removed with an axe, and it was taken to New Milnes, where they used it as a football. Another case was of, of Covenanters John Fergus Hill, also known as John Fergus, and George Woodburn, also known as George White Hill, who were shot by Lieutenant Nisbet at the nearby Midland Farm. They are both buried here, but commemorated on two separate gravestones. Another Covenanter buried here is that of Peter or Patrick Gamel. He's only aged 21. He was also shot by Lieutenant Nisbet. To record in his gravestown, however, 
that he was laughed at whilst he was dying, and even he was even refused to finish saying his final prayers. A number of the inscriptions are particularly moving on the Covenanters' graves. In the case of, of James White, this martyr was by Peter Ingalls shot by Bertha Tiger rather than a Scot, who that his monstrous extract might be seen, cut off his head and kicked it o'er the green. Thus was that head, which was to wear a crown, a football made by a profane dragoon. Another grave is that of Robert Bunting and James Blackwood, who were executed in 1666 in Glasgow, following their attendance at an event in the Pentlands. A memorial cross commemorates eight Fenwick parishioners who were taken to Edinburgh to the grass market where they were judged, found to be guilty of being covenanters, and they were sentenced to, to work as slaves in the American colonies. Their boat, however, sank and they were drowned before they reached America. One of the most significant memorials here is that of Captain John Payton. He was a professional soldier fighting in Sweden. He came over to Scotland. He was involved in a number of the uprisings, particularly that of Drum Clog and Bothwell Brig. He lived at nearby Meadow Head. Eventually he was captured and executed. Captain Payton was even a member of the Kirk Session with William Guthrie. It said that his, at his farm at a head, the famous co Covenanter minister, Donald Cargill, preached and also carried a number of baptisms. The old parish jugs are still attached to the church wall. This is a reminder of times when the church had its own courts and they could punish recalcitrant members of the congregation. In this case, it's said to be the last person who had it placed around his neck was somebody who had stabbed a neighbor's horse. <laughs>